Who was Anne Boleyn? Anne Boleyn was born in between 1501 and 1505 in Blicking Hall, Norfolk. She was brought up in Hever Castle in Kent with her family. There were no records of Anne's birth, so dating this exactly can be quite difficult. After investigating her writing and grammar, it was identified to be of a girl of a young age. So these dates are the closest we have to being accurate. Anne came from a very well-known family. Her father was Thomas Boleyn, the Earl of Wiltshire, and was in fact one of the most powerful men in the country at the time. He was a special friend and confidant to Henry VII. Her mother was Lady Elizabeth Howard. She had two siblings, one sister called Mary and a brother named George. Her father moved around a lot and was sent on errands overseas often by Henry VII, which his family accompanied him. Anne did stay in Belgium to complete an education and by 1521 she had made her way back to England to be married. She awaited her family instruction on who her suitor was to be. The heir of Ormond was chosen to be her husband and plans were made for the wedding. But this fell through rather suddenly and Anne started her affair with a rich man called Henry Percy. The lead of the Roman Catholic Church, known as Cardinal Wolsey, had found out about the affair and had to put a stop to it. It was said that these actions were based on the instruction of the new king, Henry VIII, after he had noticed her at a prior engagement. Anne was also known to have had an affair with the well-known poet, Sir Thomas Wyatt, who was at the time married. Sir Thomas Wyatt was imprisoned and this was due to his affair with Anne. Also, jealousy paid a big part in this, as Sir Thomas was considered an attractive man and many women threw themselves at him after his split from his wife. Henry VIII had started to openly notice Anne and was said to be attempting to make her his mistress due to the fact that he was already married at the time. This was not uncommon and Mary, Anne's sister, had previously had this position as Henry VIII's mistress. This was not enough for Anne. She persisted to state that she was either to be queen or nothing. Then in 1527, Henry went to the church to seek an annulment for his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. This was eventually agreed to and Henry was free to remarry much to Anne's delight. It has been said that Henry VIII was incredibly passionate about Anne and love letters were written to her, 17 in fact, which are currently displayed at the Vatican Library. She was described as moderately attractive and the opposite to what many queens were. She was olive-skinned with dark eyes and hair. Many queens had pale skin blue eyes and pale hair. Anne became very unpopular in England. She had new ideas for the church. She had become very involved in religious aspects of the courts. She had a sharp tongue and a fiery temper, of which those who were present in court saw. When the long annulment battle continued with Henry and Catherine of Aragon, Anne was worried that if this annulment didn't go through, that he would in fact return to his first wife and not her. This was not an option. Due to her father's wealth and position, Anne was given the title Marquis of Pembroke, a title which she held without help of Henry. Henry persisted with his need for an heir to the throne. A son is what he needed. Anne finally gave in to these demands, knowing that if she didn't, Henry would in fact leave her. And not long after this, she fell pregnant. Something which helped his case for his first marriage to be annulled. He had to be married to Anne to legitimise the claim to Anne's baby, whom they were sure was a son and heir. 
While she was pregnant, her coronation was to take place and a gown of gold cloth was made specifically for her on her request. And on the 1st of June was the day she became Queen, a title she had wanted for many years. In August, the birth of Anne and Henry's first child was imminent and she took to her chamber in late August and remained there until the 7th of September. The title Prince had already been written, but to the couple's surprise, baby Princess Elizabeth was born. Upset that there was no heir to his throne, the couple tried for another baby very quickly, and in January of 1534, she was pregnant again, a baby which she lost. And again the next year, this happened again. This time, the baby was a boy. She knew now that not producing a living son was a threat to her life. She had heard that Henry had taken a liking to Jane Seymour and had begun the courting process that she had begun all those years ago. In 1536, Anne's fall from grace began. Many powerful people who surrounded the Queen were arrested. Thomas Cromwell had started action to bring down the Queen. This was surprising to her, as she was close friends with Cromwell. But he had made Henry VIII the supreme head of the Church of England so that he could annul his own marriage. And as thanks, Henry made him a very powerful man. With Anne making waves and attempting to be more powerful than him, they became enemies. And using Henry's love for Jane Seymour as a catalyst to bring the current Queen down from her position. A document was signed by the King, which would result in Anne being arrested and charged with treason, which would ultimately result in her death. Anne's friend Mark Smeaton was arrested and tortured for information on the Queen, which would be used against her in the courts. Sir Henry Norris and George Boleyn, Anne's own brother, were arrested. Then on the 2nd of May, 1536, Anne Boleyn was arrested and taken to the famous Tower of London, down the same road that she took for her coronation not long before. The charges were adultery, incest and to plot to kill her husband, the king. The courtroom was packed with around 2,000 people. The trials against Anne and George took place at the same time. Anne was calm and dignified and denied all of the charges read to her by her uncle Thomas Howard, the Duke of Norfolk. And with very little evidence against them, except for that evidence given by George's wife, who was then later executed on a so-called different matter. It was said that she needed to be taken out to stop the truth of the lies she had spoken in court against Anne and George. Then on the 15th of May, the sentence read out was the pair were found guilty and should be burned at the stake, which was the current punishment for incest. Or if the king intervened, they could be beheaded due to adultery charges instead. On May the 17th, George was beheaded on Tower Hill. Anne knew she was to die very soon. Henry made waves to dissolve their marriage and make it invalid before her execution, which would then raise the question of how she could be unfaithful if they were never really married. But just like the whole case of charges against Anne Boleyn, Henry needed her out of the way, however he could, and preposterous charges were effectively made up. On the 19th of May, at 8 o'clock in the morning, Anne was taken to Tower Green, where her private execution was to take place. A special swords person had been brought in to attend, rather than the use of an axe. This was on Anne's request to the king. As she feared, her famous little neck would cause problems for the executioner with the axe. Anne was blindfolded and put in place. She repeated... 
To Jesus Christ I commend my soul. Lord Jesus, receive my soul. And with one swift movement, that was the end of Anne Boleyn. The execution was witnessed by Anne's long-time friend, Thomas Cranmer. He had taken his thoughts to the king, stating that Anne should not be culpable for what he had charged her with, a plea which fell on deaf ears. Her body was placed into an arrow-marked chest and taken to an unmarked grave in the chapel of St Peter and Vincula at Tower Green. And Anne was literally erased from all history for the time that Henry VIII was king. Her name was even removed from some tapestries. When Queen Victoria reigned, renovations took place at the chapel and Anne's remains were identified and they were given a special marked plot under the marble floor, now making her an important part of British royal history. <laughs>